Hey everyone, I'm King. Welcome back to King Spade channel. The Legend of Neverland mobile game had just launched for global server recently. I know, I know. Most of you who are following this channel are from the Southeast Asia region, and you might probably think this game had been available for quite some time now. And you are right. The SAS server was launched in 2021, and it just recently launched for global version. I never played the game when it is launched. In SA region, so this is the first time I'm playing this, and this is my take for this game. Before we go on further with the video, I want to give a huge thanks to this video sponsor, LD Player. LD Player is an Android emulator for gamers who prefer to run their mobile phone games on PC or laptop. Whether you are using Intel or AMD powered computer, LD Player can optimize your Android gaming experience with useful gamer oriented features such as in game controller and easy screenshot to save your memorable moment in game. With high FPS and graphics, LD Player lets you have a smooth gameplay and stable connection. With multi instant feature, LD Player can open several games at once which lets you support multiple accounts simultaneously. You can download LD Player at their official website ldplayer.net. You can also get the download link at the video description below. Alright, The Legend of Neverland was associated by the players as somewhat similar to the game Genshin Impact by the looks and the designs of the game character. Now I never played Genshin Impact so I do not know how similar The Legend of Neverland to Genshin Impact but to compare it with other mobile games that I had played, the first impression that come in my mind and what I feel when playing the game is it is a crossover between the Tales Noah and Ninokuni mobile game. The gameplay, particularly the game features in the game like the side quest, mini game, mini quest, things that you need to do to get ESP to level up, feels familiar to the game mechanic in Tales Noah. The mechanic of the side quest and mini games not necessarily exactly the same, but the idea of it is quite similar. Ninokuni reference it for its overall outlook. It doesn't have the Giburi feel to it but it has a beautiful scenery straight out from drawing like looks. Now I do see why it is also being referenced to Genshin Impact. When the game start, you are given and guided by this little helper. It's called the Flower Fairy. It is equivalent to machinery or pad on some other games. Two fairies can be equipped at the same time. Equip the same element of fairies will activate the fairy element and your attack will be imbued with the element attribute. Now in Legend of Neverland, I know notice that this helper is quite strong, especially if you manage to have the super grad fairy. Their skills are very powerful. Often time when I am doing quest, the fairy deals more damage than my own character. That may also have to do with my character's standard build. In this game, I chose the scholar class as my starter character. If you have been following this channel, you will know that I usually will choose the ranger class for RPG game like this. But for this game, I want to try something else. I want to use a more self-reliant class that can heal themselves and do not depend so much on health potions so I can AFK farming. These are four classes to choose from. Swordsman, the Ranger, Scholar, and Craftsman. The Craftsman can only be used at level 65, so you are left to only three to choose. Each class have two types of play styles. For the Scholar, the class that I use, it can be played as a magic damage offensive class or a support healer class. Unlike other RPG games, the skill set in this game are limited. Each character has eight main skills, with each skill have upgradable passive skill to make its damage attributes stronger. All skills are separate to two group of playstyle. Each playstyle is specified into four skills. Equipping at least three skills from the same type of playstyle will unlock the playstyle buff. Here is what unique about this game. You are not limited to just use only eight skills from your starter class. You can also use the other class skills. How do you do that? 
by changing your class wherever you are in the game, even in battle. Yep, you heard it right. At the character page, there are three weapon slots. Each slot is unlocked at certain level. At first, I thought this is similar to the Ninokuni game mechanic, where you can slot three of the same types of weapon that can give you the weapon attribute and increase your CP or combat power. It took me quite a long time to realize that that is not the way this weapon slot works. This weapon slot can be equipped with other type of weapon. By equipping the selected weapon, you can change your character class to that type of weapon class. Let me show you how it works. Here I have the weapon book at the first slot and the hand cannon at the second slot. To change the character class at the main screen, there is a switch icon at the lower right corner. When you click on it, it will show you the class icon according to the weapon that you had equipped. The first slot is the scholar that used the book, and the second slot is the craftsman that used the hand cannon. The third one is still locked. It can be unlocked at level 76. When you switch to other class, the skill set will also be changed according to the class skill. You can customize the skill that you want to use at the skill page. The skill level is not shared with other class it is separated meaning it is basically a new skill that you can use so you will need to use materials to upgrade the skill just like you usually do for your main class it will get super confusing at first with all of these game features and quests that are available once you start the game but they are all organized in a simple way and very easy to understand although for me it is overwhelming in the beginning because it is too many the game layout the icon is design minimal. The drop down menu reminds me of the window 11 look. It is something that you don't usually see in a game. Well, what do you think of the game? I can find a little piece of element from each other mobile games that I played before, which make it familiar and unique at the same time. And the ability to switch class in this game is new to me, which make it even more special from the rest of the game. Alright, that's it for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. And also, don't forget to turn on the notification bell, so you will be notified whenever I upload a new video. That's it for now, I'll see you on the next video. And as always, happy playing, bye bye!